Hi, you're watching Hindustan Times. I'm Aditi Prasad. Justin Trudeau's allegation that New Delhi was involved in the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijar has ensured one thing for sure, that India-Canada relations have sunk to a never-before low point. India has, of course, denied the allegations, but Mr. Trudeau is continuing to lead his country and the world down the same garden path. This is problematic on many fronts. I have with me um, Ward Elcroc, former director of the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, uh, CSIS, and we will talk about the hows and whys of Trudeau's quote-unquote credible allegations against New Delhi. First of all, sir, welcome to the show. Trudeau talking about this terrorist, Nijal, as though he were a mere plumber who was killed on Canadian soil. I mean, as prime minister of an entire nation, I'm sure he knows about Nijal's list of terrorist acts, the FIRs in India against him. Um, I'm, I'm frankly not aware of, of, of any information with respect to Nijar. Obviously, I'm retired, so uh, I don't have access to secret intelligence. Um, I assume if the government has uh, information or had information with respect to Mr. Nijar, uh, they would have um, moved uh, in respect of him. But um, I think what the government has said so far is that information it's received from India, any information it's received from India with respect to Canadians has not actually uh, met the requirements of Canadian law to take any action. So I'm not aware that Mr. Nijar had in, what was in fact had any had undertaken any terrorist activities whatsoever. So you're not aware and you're saying even Mr. Trudeau is, of course, not aware of the of the same as prime minister of Canada, because we are in we I mean, the, the Indian intelligence authorities have shared with us uh, a dozier of the num and, and the fact that they've shared it with Canada time and again uh, from I mean, a number of times. And he is a wanted person in India, not just in India, there's an Interpol uh, notice also against him. Uh, I mean, are we saying that Canada is not aware of that at all? Uh, no, I'm not saying that. Canada, I assume, is aware of whatever has been shared with it. Uh, but I think what the government has so far said, and obviously I'm, I'm not privy to what what they have seen or what what information they have. But to the extent that the government has commented, they have said that information provided by India doesn't meet the standards of Canadian law for action. All right, and and but what about the evidence, sir? Because he's talked about uh, uh, Justin Trudeau government has said that they have uh, quote unquote credible allegations. At the end of that, at the at the end of the day, they they've not talked about evidence. They've just talked about allegation. How you know how how do you see this? What do you think is the is the is the credible allegations quote unquote uh, versus real evidence? I mean, if they have evidence, why don't they just present it to the entire world? Because we understand that many Canadians, including the Canadian opposition leader, said that he's yet to see any real evidence. I think the government has made it clear that the information it has is derived from sensitive intelligence. Uh, that information, the, the fact that that information exists has to some extent been confirmed by the Americans, uh, Jake Sullivan. Uh, made a comment the other day which indicated that uh, they had uh, shared some intelligence on this issue. Uh, that sensitive intelligence obviously at this point has not been shared, uh, although I gather the government has had some discussions with India in an earlier time uh, and would like to have further discussions with India on, on the subject. Um, but obviously that information is unlikely to be shared publicly anytime soon. Uh, as far as... Um... Uh, the Trudeau government is concerned. Canada has asked India to be involved in this, involved in the investigations, to uncover the truth, uh, to sort of get to the bottom of it. Um, India is, of course, still waiting for some some semblance of some some evidence has to come. Right? If you are getting up in your parliament and making a statement as big as that, uh, there has to be some evidence to show the world because I don't see the other other uh, uh, five i network partners the alliance partners um, shunning india in the same way they've all said yes the truth must come out but they they're not they're not actually condemning india or criticizing india which would have been the case if there was credible information on the table um 
the reality is I, I think that this is sensitive intelligence information. Um, the government, I'm sure, would like to have some discussions with India on the subject. I'm not aware whether any discussions have taken place. Oh. I'm not quite sure what India requires in terms of information before it has any discussions. But I see no reason that, that Canada and India couldn't have a discussion on the subject. Okay, let, let's talk about you being associated with the with the uh, uh, with the intelligence agencies in Canada for for a very long time. You're now retired. In your during your tenure, what did you understand about the Khalistani terror network within Canada? What was your understanding? Uh, the, clearly, in an earlier time. Uh, there were elements within the in the community that were had slipped over the edge into terrorist activities and and clearly uh, Air India uh, the downing of Air India and some other cases indicate uh, uh, that that extremists uh, terrorists in fact had had in fact targeted uh, uh, Canadians um, on a number of occasions um, I think in the period after that a period after the 80s uh, that the that has had subsided, I think. Um, support for an independent Khalistan seems to have uh, uh, become more topical in in recent times. But it's not clear to me that um, that indeed any of those activities carried out by supporters of an independent Khalistan rise to the level of terrorism. Uh, I assume. Uh, the government's view would be the same as it was in my day that if Canadians, the Canadians, uh, Canadians should not be carrying out ter terrorist activities in other parts of the world, and that if people in Canada do seek to carry out terrorist activities in other parts of the world, uh, they will be prosecuted. Um, but but it, there is no indication that that such activities have been carried out at this point. Okay, there is no indication that such. I mean, you and you you retired from service uh, when exactly? I retired in two thousand sixteen. Two thousand sixteen. So you're saying before two thousand sixteen, there was no credible uh, dossier or no uh, evidence that was shared by the Indian government regarding terrorist activities, Khalistani activities uh, within Canada. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm not aware of of any information um, and certainly uh, in that period um, after the 80s in more recent times there haven't been any prosecutions of Canadians with respect to uh, terrorist activities in support of, of an independent Khalistan. Uh, I, I guess I would point out that in this country support for separatism is not a criminal offense. Okay, support for a separate separatism is not a criminal offense, and and as far as as far as we know, and we have, uh, I mean, there are visuals uh, in, in you know, uh, which are openly available of uh, this man Niger, uh, you know, training uh, in some training camp, and obviously somewhere in Canada, carrying these guns, etc. And and we have a dossier from the which we HD has access to as HD gotten that uh, dossier from the Indian intelligence uh, uh, services uh, about Niger, about how he ran terror camp, he ran open arms training camps in Canada. You're saying that none of that uh, evidence has passed within your eye till 2016 while you were there and post that you don't know. Uh, I'm not, I'm not aware of that information. Um, I assume if that information was conveyed to the government of Canada and those who were responsible at the time, that if uh, there were credible, if there was credible information that would have allowed a prosecution, the government would have undertaken a prosecution. But uh, I think the government has said, as I said earlier, on a couple of occasions, that information that was conveyed to it didn't if did not in fact rise to the level of uh to a level that would allow prosecution under canadian law and what does the canadian law exactly says about what would come under the level of i mean would running uh, arms training camps come under the level of uh, prosecution or would that be called terrorism under canadian law what does the canadian law say about terrorism the canadian i don't i don't have the the section in front of me, but uh, it's a fairly broad section which would deal with any terrorist activities. 
um, uh, as to whether, uh, uh, as to the information about whether he was running a, a, a military training camp of some sort in Canada. Obviously, I, I don't, I'm not aware of that information. Uh, I don't know whether the government investigated that information and concluded that it was or was not accurate or was or was not within um, the confines of the law. Okay, let's talk about this. There is the there is the uh, uh, there is a Canadian journalist who's come out and said, and he's made this uh, uh, sweeping uh, comment that various sections of the media within Canada believe that Justin Trudeau is running a minority government, and he, uh, as we all know, and I'm not asking you to comment on the politics of it because you're an intelligence person, but my question comes from a different thing. He says he's come out and said that. This fight with India that Justin Trudeau has picked is primarily to cover up the scandal with China, that the China's interference in Canadian elections. How, would you sort of want to shed some light on this whole controversy about China's involvement in Canada's elections? Uh, there are there have been allegations of of Chinese interference in in Canadian affairs, uh, not only elections, but in other respects as well. Uh, but as I've said on a number of occasions, the, there are a number of countries which have uh, over the years uh, interfered in in Canadian affairs, uh, including India. Including India, you're saying, but but the you do what would you what do you what substance do you find in those allegations is that being investigated uh the chinese connection as well as the indian connection which you're saying uh is there um i think the government the government has the the royal commission which the government uh, initiated um it, it, the mandate of that commission is to investigate foreign interference by any country including china um, um but but uh, that would include other countries, um, whether it's Russia or 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 even India. All right. So you you're not aware of the uh, what what do you make of these uh, what do you make of this uh, thing that uh, this is Justin Trudeau's way of covering up the time because apparently Justin Trudeau and his party have sought uh, Chinese interference uh, and Chinese support really for for their for the elections. And that is the whole scandal that that is being tried to cover up. Is do you, do you find any substance in that uh, comment? Given that you are in Canada and you're following things, no, I I think those comments are pretty much without substance. You think they are pretty much without substance? Uh, I'd like to talk to you about. You said you talked about uh, uh, Justin Trudeau actually, and and we we saw that him standing standing in front of the parliament and actually uh, making a comment. Uh, in front of the entire country uh, and the world, because you're standing in Parliament about India's the credible allegations against India, but there's also a Baloch activist who's been who's been murdered uh, in 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 uh, in Canada, and there is uh, credible uh, information about the Pakistani government's involvement there. There is a police case there. Here there was no police case, but there's not a whisper from Justin Trudeau on that, but about this New Delhi thing, the New Delhi connection, just on the basis of credible allegations, he's gone in, par in Parliament and said something. But where there's actually a case, which is actually a police case has been registered for this Baloch woman's death with Pakistani government's involvement, nothing is said about that. Your views on that? Uh, I'm not aware of that case. Uh, uh, the question, obviously the issue uh, it could well be that uh, there is information that, that in this case, uh, the government believes supports its allegations. In other cases, they may not have the necessary intelligence to uh, to come to a conclusion one way or the other. All right, that's 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 simply uh, a very convenient uh, position for uh, Mr. Trudeau to have, isn't it? Uh, to just make an allegation uh, without sharing any evidence, saying that it's classified. And in another case where there is actually an investigation going on, uh, is just not uh, important enough or big enough uh, to be talked about. But having said that, but thank you so much for your time. Uh, I know we've taken up more time because of our technical issues at the beginning. 
than what we had uh, promised for. But thank you so much for talking to us, sir. And we hope to get in touch with you and talk to you again and get your views on whatever is going on as far as the Canadian allegation on New Delhi is concerned. Happy thank to you. chat. Thank you.